Hi, this is Looney from Bitlinies Lab and welcome to everybody's favorite segment, Filler Friday! Okay, I just made it up. It will be rather an unscripted video since I am gone this weekend and I don't have much time to prepare something great, but uh, it will be good anyways. Today I wanted to show you this uh, MIDI USB host board that uh, I purchased um, two years ago probably um, for another project that I will maybe show you. I never finished it and it allows you to connect generic MIDI devices to it and convert it to um, simple um, serial um, communication here. This way it's not necessary to connect the USB devices to your computer to transfer the MIDI signals. You can use this directly with the microcontroller. With bigger keyboards like this it's not really necessary to use a USB host controller like this one since you have this um, generic old connector that's using serial already and I have used this for my older projects. Uh, so check them out if you like to see how to connect this up. The smaller MIDI devices like this one and probably this one and the controllers like this one and this one and I even have more of these somewhere, kind of a collector. They don't have this big generic MIDI connector anymore since uh, it's too large. And uh, what we have there is just an USB port. I will show you how to connect this to the host here and to the microcontroller. And this here is a Wemos shield with an I2S chip and uh, yeah, an audio jack that I have uh, designed for the synthesizer project and I will just show how this is working with the host. So you can see the host is transferring the keystrokes and also the controller changes. Uh, to my microcontroller and uh, the microcontroller can process all the strokes and uh, uh, digital data and uh, generate um, this analog audio. Even though you might not be interested in MIDI devices mm -hmm. and instruments and so on, um, this MIDI host can be also used for different kind of projects. So let's say you need some kind of input into your microcontroller like a potentiometer like this one here. So you could connect this actually to this uh, ADC input and read out the values and maybe control a servo motor and uh, RGB lights or whatever. But um, you have only just limited amount of uh, ADCs on your board. So especially the ESP8266 that has only one. And um, yeah, that's kind of dif uh, difficult to set up like RGB colors uh, since you can only provide one analog value. And in this case, um, this MIDI host comes really handy since you only need a serial connection. And then you can use all the MIDI controllers here, like the knobs, and uh, set up your complete system and control servos and uh, do your testing and debugging. So I would say something like this. This uh, is just a mixer, MIDI mix. and um, this is controlling something like a panning and uh, other filters and volume here. But you could use this uh, to control all, kind, all kinds of stuff like uh, RGB values here for different pixels and maybe servo positions like this. Okay, so we are here again with um, an Arduino Micro that I have used in my last project with the Mallet Spot. And um, let's say I want to use the Mallet Spot with this um, Hobbytronics USB host. Then I have to provide it with power and we get VCC here and ground here. We have even two ground connections there. So I will connect this to ground and then don't mess it up. Five volts here and there is um, a label with zero volts, which is the ground. Okay. We need the TX and RX, so I will connect the RX to the white Q 
cable and then we have here additional TX and RX on the uh, microcontroller and then we have to connect the RX to the TX and other way around like this. This should be okay. Yes. And let's see if the smoke, the magic smoke escapes if I connect this. Now everything is right, up and running. Even my computer told me so. Now I just need to connect the USB cable to the host. And then we have a connection there. There's a blue LD. This is zoomed in, so you can check the connections. Okay, now let's check out the code. Okay, we start with a clean Arduino IDE and the first thing you will do is to set your board. I have selected the micro here and the port and the next thing is to simply start with an example so that's what I'm always doing I pick an example like communication in this case and multi-serial since we have uh, one serial to the computer we want to do some output on the console and one serial to the USB host. And this is the example. I will just remove the huge command on the top so you will see what I'm doing here. And now we have to initialize the ports. The first serial here is uh, to the computer uh, over USB and I will set this up to 115 to 100 so we get a faster transmission and the second serial here serial one is to the usb host uh, midi host and this has to be set to the midi baud rate uh, which is uh, 31,250 exactly and once we did this that's actually already done. So let's upload this and try if we can communicate here. So what this sketch actually does is transfer all the data that we sent to the microcontroller to the uh, MIDI USB host and the other way around. So I open the monitor here and now I change a knob and you can see something's happening there and it looks like it has some structure so the 6 is repeating here and there is a value which is uh, changing with the knob and when I use another knob then you can see the number in the middle changed here like this uh, what we can skip here is we don't want to transfer anything um, to the device. Uh, we don't need it. Uh, if you would need it, you could uh, leave it. But uh, so whenever something is sent from the computer to the MIDI device, we can just delete this part. And this is sending from port one to port zero. So this is actually from our MIDI to, I'll just leave it like this add the command here from MIDI to debug out oops <laughs> okay so uh, we could format this a little bit different so we use print instead and we can print out hex values so we don't see this question marks this will be the first change Okay, and now we have um, the hex values on the screen. Great. And you can see when I rotate the knob, you can see this one, the, this, the last byte changes. 
it ends with uh, the highest value you can get there for a controller is um, 7F, which is 127 mm, value, and the lowest is of course zero. And um, MIDI messages are built like this. The only, the first byte of a message always has uh, the high bit set. So everything from uh, 8 to F uh, in this first di digit here, and that indicates the start of a message and uh, B0 indicates in this case a controller change and this is the controller number so 3B is the controller that I'm changing right now and the next is 3C and this one is 3A so you can use this as the controller and um, the last is the value so let's build this in the code Let me explain what I did here. So we have uh, byte read, uh, that's meant how many bytes we have uh, read from our message and this can store up to three bytes which are all initialized with zero. Then we have this if statement from before uh, that's checking if there is a byte uh, from the MIDI serial and then we read this byte and check if the highest significant bit of the a byte is set. If so, then it's the first byte of the message. We store this. Then uh, we set the counter to 1 and then we st store the uh, subsequent bytes uh, if it's not uh, the first control byte. So um, this should fill up uh, the messages and whenever we read uh, 3 bytes then the message is uh, ready and we can print it out here and reset the byte counter to zero. This is a very basic implementation. We are not considering uh, messages that are uh, fewer than three bytes and also not uh, system exclusive messages with, which can uh, use different bytes and counts and so on. So the MIDI interface has some exceptions but this should work with the most devices uh, in a simple way. Okay. Oh, great. So I can change this lever here. You can see this is 53. Then we have 52, 51, 50. And the first uh, is always B0, which is control change. And um, yeah, actually, the second nibble, so the, the B is uh, stands for control change and uh, this is the channel number. So we could also decode this. So we print out first the higher four bits and then the lower four bits for the channel. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is B for control change and zero for channel zero. And then we have and the controller and the value. Let's put it in practice and try to control a servo motor. Okay, VCC. It's here. Ground. It's here. And PWM signal is here. Let's say pin six. Okay, let's assign assign this lever here to our servo, and this is uh, B zero twenty uh, sixty two. Let's check the code, what I have done. I included the servo library, then made an instance uh, for one servo, attached it to the pin that we connected the servo to, then um, checking for the message. So if we have the control change, controller number was 62, then we write to the servo and map um, the third byte here, uh, which is between zero and 127, 
uh, to the complete uh, servo range from 0 to 180. And let's try it. Oops. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's try it now. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. This is a continuous servo motor. Now I can control it with my lever here. Isn't that great? Okay, so let's try another type. Yeah, SG90, that is the cheapest one. Okay, so SG90. Isn't that cool? I love it. Okay, this was just one servo motor. This could be also done with a single pot. Um, but now let's add a little bit code and uh, attach, let's say, this RGBW uh, strip to it. For this, we need another library, and I will just code this fast here. Okay, let's try it. Oh, okay, so this is the blue component. Then we add some green. And this should be red. Whoops, I just moved another knob there. <laughs> so red, and this should be white. Yes! Four components. So this is what we have at the end of the day. Get the servo here. The communication doesn't work with the last pixels here. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have uh, here we can control the colors of uh, these strips, the servo, and the white parts here, the strip. And uh, I hope you get the message. Uh, you can use MIDI controllers easily to control your stuff with this uh, MIDI USB host. I will put the links to the code and to the parts in the description. I hope you liked this basic tutorial. If so, give it a thumbs up and uh, tell me in the comments what you would like to see and what I should show. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and maybe support me on Patreon if you like. See you next time. Bye! Thank you.